we haven't recorded in a while, and we've had holidays, we've had parties, we've had things. Should we say that this is a hello to the podcast, maybe a season two wrap-up? I would call this a season two wrap-up, and the funny thing about our seasons is that number two has almost lasted about two years. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, for those paying attention, this is Aaron and Justin Talk Sequels, a movie podcast. I'm Justin. I'm Aaron. This is kind of our season two wrap up slash season three intro episode. Yeah. It is episode 51. Can you believe that? 50 episodes in the can. It's quite the feat uh how was your holiday sir you went to new york you dick uh yeah holiday was good and uh yeah i recently went to new york for work purposes but when i wasn't needed i was able to go out and shoot video of the city and i went up to the top of the empire state building i paid for that which was like 50 bucks but you can go up and get video and then uh i walked all over new york real quick on the empire state yeah is the majority of that building still empty I think they still have businesses and people still go there for work, but it's a different door you enter. So if you enter the observation deck door, I mean, you are led through this huge thing. And then there's like this giant museum. King Kong is like in the windows and his hands are sticking out. And, and it's they put like a ton of work into this thing. And you can watch it being built when you're in the elevator going up. So I think like there's one side of the building that's complete tourists and the other side is like actual businesses. So I don't you don't see the businesses. And my, my phrasing was an exaggeration, but... I remember going up there and every floor we went on was completely empty and devoted only to taking people to the top. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was empty because it was just a lot of people being shuffled in and out, but it was cool. So I got to do that. And then, uh, like, I, you know, I'd shoot stuff like I shot the library, you know, because that's famous for Ghostbusters. Um, I saw the Chelsea Hotel, which I always wanted to see. It's famously the place where all of the writers and musicians lived during the 60s, 70s, 80s. Uh. It's where Dylan Thomas apparently got sick days before he died. Thomas Wolfe lived there for years. Arthur C. Clarke wrote 2001 A Space Odyssey there. Um, Sid Vicious from the Sex Pistols murdered his girlfriend Nancy there. Really? Um, Dylan stayed there. Uh, all kinds of people. It still looks beautiful on the outside, but I'm sure it's very nice in the inside now and it's just intended to be a hotel. But there are some residents that were grandfathered in and they're just allowed there to live out. They're just allowed to live out their time, but the rest of the place is, is an actual hotel. And then the last thing I did was I went to the Lincoln Center and, um, I saw the Lou Reed exhibit at the public library for the perform for the, for the performing arts and it's a treasure trove of all of his stuff and it's just it's free it's at a library you can just walk in and you can just see everything lou reed um and it's open until march 4th so it was cool because i knew about it but I, there was no way i was going to get to new york and then all of a sudden this trip came up and they were like yeah we don't need you saturday you have saturday off so if you want to do it and i was like boom i gotta go see the lou reed exhibit that's really cool you know what is um crazy though is like growing up in michigan you always feel like detroit is a big city but then when you come to chicago you're just like oh man detroit is like half a mile of a big city and that is it and then you go to new york and you're just like holy shit <laughs> this place is so condensed and so full of people. I went back to Chicago and was like, where is everybody? But Chicago's a pretty big city. It's just not nothing's like New York, man. I don't think. Maybe Tokyo, but... I was going to say Tokyo. Charlie yeah. is so into the Japanese culture right now that I've never cared about going to Tokyo. But now that I realize mm -hmm. it's the most populous city in the world, I want to check it out. A lot of people, uh, when they're young, if they get in on Tokyo and they get in on J Japanese manga, they go all in. So I was going to ask you, like, how did that come about with your daughter? Because... I know people I, like that, and it never grabbed me at all. At all, and I tried multiple times. Like we did, I'm we assuming... watched um, Ronin Warriors for God's sakes. But okay, I Ronin Warriors was the shit. It was cool, okay. but it didn't like it didn't lead me into anything else. It did not lead me into anything. In else. fact, when I see a lot of Japanese animation and stuff like that, I'm bored. It's boring to me. Demon Slayer. I think she got the inkling from her brother, and then she just went all in and watched it all, and she finally after all these months talked me into watching it and i just finished the first season and then the movie season i want to say this right so i don't get yelled at by future fans the mugan train arc thank you the animation's great thing about this show that i really love is that it is very adult mm. <laughs> i say that as my eight-year-old watches it but 
in the first episode, his entire family is slaughtered, and they just show their dead bodies covered in blood laying wow. on the ground. And they show it frequently. The only survivor was his little sister, who gets turned into a demon. So he travels the country. He becomes a demon slayer to discover the cure to save his sister. Is it a current thing or was it made a long time ago season three is gonna come out soon so it's pretty current but it was probably like a comic before oh yeah it, the manga is over it had 25 I editions see. my daughter got the 25 edition box set for christmas their most exciting present was books and i was very proud well i tell you as you know sometimes the most unexpected comic series uh that becomes your favorite is often because you read the full thing for whatever reason you get a lot of it and then you want to complete it i think that's when it becomes like like preacher or something for yeah. us. oh you you're just driven to find the rest and yeah. complete it and yeah but then and knowing that it ended that's the that's the magical part of it because you know that that story existed and it, and it won't be repeated any anytime soon or hopefully at all by the by the creators. That kind of special is a fleeting special nowadays, as we totally. all know. That's what I don't like about it. They're nowadays. scared of new ideas. Like I don't know what the hell I they like really a guaranteed money I'm maker. Sure, it's just a money thing. Like why would yeah. you, why wouldn't you want a guarantee? Because this is all these people that run these companies. Their jobs are on the line every time they make a decision. Like, if you make the wrong decision about something and it's a failure, you're gone. <laughs> like, you don't get a lot of second chances. And I think a lot of these people that run the companies just want a for sure thing so they can go and tell their bosses, look what I did. I made money. I just wish they'd take more chances. Like, people push back against streaming, but I feel like streaming, there's a lot to be said about streaming and the way that the theater world is working now, but... Like, I feel like they take more chances because of streaming and we get a wider variety of stuff that we wouldn't have otherwise. Like, if Netflix wasn't out there funding crazy projects, I feel like everything in theaters would have been Marvelized a while ago. Yeah. Like, the last year has been a horror renaissance. Amazing. Amazing horror movies. I, with streaming, I think you get, like, maybe two weeks of popularity and then something else comes in. I guess I go back on what I say a little bit in that they want for sure things, but with streaming, they are allowed a lot of choices and allowed a lot of different chances, I guess. I don't know. But that does take me into my first thing that I wanted to talk about because I loved your response to Tom Cruise Maverick. Tom Cruise Maverick, <laughs> Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> Tom funny. Cruise Maverick. Tom thing. Cruise Maverick. Maverick would be a great book. You great really... So wait, I liked the movie, this. but the funny thing, what I loved about it is that you said, not that you liked it, that's fine. I liked it too, to a degree. But you were like, I love that they didn't name the enemy because it made it timeless. And I just couldn't stop laughing at that because I was like, that is one way to take it. But they definitely didn't name the enemy because they didn't have the balls to say it was Russia or no. North Korea. No. Yes, because, no. because here's the issue with taking chances nowadays, they don't want to take any chance that they could not get an opening in China or that the box office would suffer because they might offend anybody. There's no edge to the thing. That's how I feel about a lot of movies nowadays is I can see how they're so afraid to offend anyone. And it uh, really kills the creativity for me. I agree with you that a lot of movies do this, but in this instance, the first one did it. I don't re see. I don't remember who the enemy was in there, but I'm pretty sure it was. There wasn't one. So see, like, did you that... watch the first movie? No, but that's I, what I'm I talking about. This... That was my other point about Maverick is that you I didn't have... even see the first one, and that's what was also funny to me. Because if you see the first one, then the second one is a little more funnier <laughs> uh, <laughs> about their choices. It was beautiful, and I recognized that a lot of the second movie copied a lot of beats from the first movie. It's yeah. just the way that it goes. I've yeah, yeah. listened and read enough coverage about the movie to know okay. that the in the first movie, they also did not name a specific country as the enemy, and it is a great way to keep it timeless. But it was highly implied it was the Soviets. Oh, yeah. Because it was the Cold War, and that was fine to do. And that's what I'm saying yeah. now is that they should have just went all in and said it was Russia. It would have dated it. It doesn't matter. We're never going to like Russia. S someday okay. we could like Russia. Also, North Korea. North Korea could totally work. No. Yeah, 20 anyway, years from now, 30 years from now, people would have looked but, back. Like, when you see when you see that scene in Top Gun Maverick where he's in the bar and Goose's son comes in and he is dressed exactly like his father was in 1986 
and he has a mustache exactly like his father does in 1986. And he sings the same song, Great Balls of Fire by Johnny uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, that none of these kids would ever listen to in the year 2022. It just stretched credibility completely. I can't believe I'm defending this movie so hard, but I really did like it a lot. But um, you realize that that kid was in the bar watching his dad play that, right? It doesn't... Of like, course. who would do that after 30-some years? I don't know. Miles Teller would. Come on. And they were all they were all singing it like he does it all the time. It was just the saddest... He probably ridiculous. does. I know, which was like, why it was so incredibly sad to me. All of his friends are like, okay, here we go again. Let's get it right this time, guys. Question for you. Um, yeah, go ahead. What is a movie outside of Top Gun Maverick where you haven't wanted to punch Miles Teller. Oh, he's punchable is what you're saying? I've always found him very punchable. Did you see Whiplash? It's kind of the one that really made him a star. I've seen bits and pieces. Yeah, it... and that was fine. He didn't Yeah, he was real like hopped up on adrenaline in that movie and everything and really worried and he did... I wouldn't I didn't want to punch him in that movie. Counter argument though, would you have wanted to punch him if you were his teacher? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. I can't. I don't want to punch people, uh, generally. What's the name of his teacher? <laughs> uh, J.K. Simmons, right? Yes, J.K. Simmons. If I was J.K. Simmons and I'm trying to teach the best musicians in the world, and this fucker just keeps being a dick, I think I would have punched him. Anyway, sorry. Miles Teller was I probably just, good in that. I just think that a lot of artists, like when you when they're really good, they're eccentric. And they kind of give their teachers a lot of shit. But they're the ones that usually end up being somebody. And the teachers look back and have to say, like, oh, he was my student. Yeah, he was a little off, but uh, I'm really proud of him. You know, that kind of thing. I'm very convinced that most uh, most geniuses are really fucked in the head yeah. in some way. Yeah. The the one thing I always take away from reading, because I read tons of biographies, autobiographies about musicians, and actors, and whatever. That's just kind of my favorite kind of books. Like, the smartest people in the world and the people you look up to the most are so stupid when it comes to relationships. <laughs> like, love marriages that's what i always take away from that i'm like how can that how can that person that is so brilliant have five wives how can he not figure that out not figuring it out the other thing is that we were talking about my point about top gun is that it had no balls and they weren't taking chances and that's what's disappointing to me also the disney movie strange world i brought up not that it's the same as top gun but when my kids and i watched that we were so bored because it was just so bland. It wasn't a good movie. That's the problem. Well, that was the problem. But it was just so bland. And I just felt it. I was like, they are just really trying not to offend anybody. Because then we went and saw the new Puss in Boots movie. I heard that's pretty good. Holy shit. It's so fucking funny. They just went for it. I mean, the the, the character swears sometimes, which I'm not saying you have to do in a kid's movie. But it was like used for comedic effect. Um, it was by far the best thing that like Shrek connected to shrek i ever saw and it was very you could tell it was very inspired by the look of uh into the spider verse because they have kind of that choppy animation thing going on sometimes but it looks fantastic so i was really impressed with that movie and it really it kept the kids awake and engaged it was violent at times but it was all in the sake of the story and all in the sake of comedy so i just really appreciated it and i was like see that that is people making a movie um who have some balls you know and I, i like that and I don't mean to say the balls thing all the time to be misogynistic in any way. <laughs> That's the only way I can think of it. It's got no teeth. Can I put, let me say it that way. Overly commercial is also another way that you could say that. Overly commercial? <laughs> That's pretty good, too. Yeah. Uh, Men in Black International. Did you ever see that one with Chris Hemsworth? It's so funny that you bring that up just because I'm going to tangent real hard into Chris Hemsworth. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Chris Evans and Chris Hemsworth are a great example of people making good and bad choices because Chris Evans has navigated post-Marvel pretty well. He's had some solid movies in there. Hemsworth, he picks a lot of weird projects that there is no reason this Men in Black movie should have been bad. But did you see it? I did. And what did you think? Wasn't good. Wasn't good. No. I mean, you see why they did it. They had such amazing chemistry in ragnarok it made sense to buddy buddy them up i i hate to say it but i don't hate to say it tessa thompson is a better actor than him see i don't think he's a bad actor but i do think that he should not give up thor anytime soon because he might be out of work 
Um, but I also, I don't think it's completely all their fault. They've certainly tried to get a lot of work, but it's that streaming thing where things are on streaming channels for about two weeks and then they're forgotten. Whereas if everything they did was in a movie theater, then it might be different. Then you might think of them as like a star, but now they're just thrown in as just an actor who, who are just people that fill movies that constantly come out on streaming. So I think in general it's a problem for A-list actors in Hollywood that there's no that it's difficult to stand out nowadays because of streaming. You're just like cattle that they cast you in things and then they put them on and they put them on streaming channels and then they're forgotten. Like the the days of Tom Cruise and Tom Hanks uh, and Julia Roberts and they're over I think for the new generation of actors. That's so interesting. Um just how Marvel has almost recaptured the old studio system where these actors were possessions of the studio and not free agents. And they're on contract and they just... Yeah, because the Marvel contracts are, what? They're usually six to ten pictures long. Oh, I have no idea. Sam, Sam Jackson and Sebastian Stan did nine movie deals. Downey Jr., Evans, and Hemsworth did six movie deals. After Thor, Love, and thunder he signed an additional three movie contract oh well, that's good for him man moon knight what's his butt oscar isaac oscar isaac made headlines when it was revealed that he didn't sign any contract oh. like he is yeah. going as he wants because he had the clout to be like i don't know if you want me i'll do it but i'm not signing the shit but he's got a good in-between career right where he can do big things and also little things and i think he's they want him yeah where i don't think hemsworth has that same thing i don't think they necessarily want him but they're happy to have him if he wants to be on board. He's he's on a different level altogether. That guy's an actor. An actor. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and uh, I'm sure we talked about Morbius before we broke, though. We had to have. I think we, we did. We talked about that already. Um, that, that was bad. Moonfall we also talked about, I'm pretty sure. I haven't finished it all the way, so I didn't get to the point where the smart aliens... I don't even remember the actual yeah, ending. I, I just remember that they defeated it. Um, The moon was hollow. Yeah, the a moon super is station. a super something or megastructure. It's a megastructure, which apparently was a is a conspiracy that grew online in the past ten years or whatever. That the moon is a, a megastructure. It sounded so fringe that I was like, they made a whole movie about that. Like, if you wanted to make an a Roland Emmerich movie about flat earthers, then I that would have been something I would have been like, yeah, well, everybody's talking about that. That would be funny as hell. Oh, it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. And so and they, I don't want to get into it, but... <laughs> the movie is about how they have to travel to the dark side of the earth. Of the earth, yeah. The bottom side, and because there's a race... Okay, this is copyright right now, Aaron and Justin. Let's workshop this right now. The idea is, is that... All of a sudden, the Earth is being destroyed by random monster attacks. Okay. And they bring in... And they're popping up from the ground, right? They're popping up from the ground. And so we cut to NASA, who they're having hushed meetings, and they have to bring in the president on the secret that they never reveal to anybody. Yeah, they never reveal to anybody. That the Earth is actually flat. Images have been faked. They haven't revealed it because on the flip side of the Earth is another Earth inhabited only by monsters. Mm -hmm. And these monsters are finding their way through now. Yeah, they never have done this in the history. Well, they did it once, like a million years ago, and that's what, or, or 65 million years ago, and this is what caused the destruction of the dinosaurs <laughs> in the first ice age or something like that. We could we could say that. But ever since then, it's been quiet, and there's been some sort of there has never been peace. dinosaurs. <laughs> what we saw, <laughs> okay, dinosaurs. Is, those the are things. the monster skeletons that so that's broke even through better. the last time. Yeah, that's even better. I was gonna say dinosaurs could be the monsters, so then the world is overtaken by dinosaurs. So then you get some of that Jurassic Park IP coming in here, right? Yeah. So Jesus <laughs> actually led the rebellion to yes. take down the monsters. Brilliant. And what? Anyway, so <laughs> NASA has to fly a spaceship to the dark side of the Earth to drop a nuke to destroy but, the monsters. But they can't go through the Earth. Why can't they go through the Earth? They have to go around it. And then so we get that crazy image where they circle the very edge of the flat Earth into the dark side. And who would star in this movie? Oh, God. Uh, 90s A-listers. No, I'm going to say the guy who plays Drax. <laughs> oh, well, no, don't. Right? I mean, he he could, but Dave Bautista's the shit. So, well, Dave Bautista could definitely do this movie. He'd be in it. Um, Gerard Butler. Gerard Butler would be in it for sure. 
But we also need some um, African American actor who maybe people are like, oh yeah, like um, Chris uh, oh, Tucker. Chris uh, Tucker should be brought Chris back, Tucker right? Returns. To be in this movie, yeah, this should be his return movie. You know, I think he got like twenty or twenty-five million dollars for doing like the third Rush Hour or something. That sounds right, and super like religious an insane now. amount. Yeah, and so he was just able to be like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm retiring. Yeah. If something good comes along and you want to pay me another twenty million, million, maybe I'll be an actor again. But he really has very rarely appeared in anything. Yeah, so yeah, and the... it's all self-imposed. He could come back if he wanted. Oh, to. Oh yeah, I think he could. He was um, fine. He was a bit annoying, I thought, but I think I appreciate him more now that I'm older than I did at the time, where I'm just like, yeah, he was cool. You know, he's one of those guys. He was I never did any of the rush hours, but I'm such a big fan of Fifth Element that I've exactly. been exposed. But to he him. was annoying. It was bizarre and yes. annoying. But now I look back and I'm like, yeah, it's cool. It was a stylistic choice. It's fine. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh. What do we call this? I would call it the Circle Conspiracy. No. Oh, it the... has to uh welcome to the flat earth i don't know see something like that something we gotta, about we gotta get this to roll an emirate yeah earth flat yeah, let's just call it earth flat earth flat earth colon flat earth colon flat or one word like moonfall like so earth flat <laughs> like moonfall just flat to earth. its credit is a great name for a movie moonfall is a good is a good name I agree. yeah i've got some oddballs for you did you see yeah, texas chainsaw massacre no, I haven't seen anything but the original, and the original I saw in the 90s, and I don't really remember too much. Okay, this is along the same lines as Halloween. They tried to do the thing where they're making a direct sequel to the first one. Yes, I understand that. And it was not a so, good movie. It was supposed to be pretty good, I thought. Uh, no? Not, not okay. great. Like, in terms of logic. In terms mm-hmm. of just watching it, it's fine. There is an amazing sequence on a bus. That alone, for me, is worth watching. It's only an hour and 23 minutes. The reason it sticks out to me is last night, for whatever reason, we watched for the first time in like 20 years the first Texas Chainsaw. And I had completely forgotten it. And there is so many movies that have aped it. And I'm thinking about uh, Psychopath. It really blew my mind. He really runs around with a chainsaw and kills almost all these people on his own. And I have this memory just because of all the other movies that the other family members were doing it. But no, like, it was him that killed every single one of these people. And my only argument when we were doing the Halloween was why I'm not a big fan of the original Halloween is because Texas Chainsaw Massacre already came out, like, five years before that. And wasn't that pretty much the first slasher movie? And didn't that, like, have real stakes to it? Whereas Halloween was creepy, but trying to kill her at the end was just kind of funny to me i just don't see why people talk about it like it's so amazing all right so we have to the timeline is psycho and then texas chainsaw and then Which halloween. Is like 74 right yep yeah and then halloween was like 78 oh, so in like between there are more groundbreaking smaller movies without as as much cultural attache like roger cormany b movie like grindhouse things there's at least one or two that are right on the bubble of being considered good. Do you remember that there is a handicap guy in the first Texas Chainsaw? Like, I didn't remember it at all. There was two couples and a dude in a wheelchair. And it was the bro- or brother of one of the chicks. Oh, the movie's so weird. All of its choices are so different. Um, I watched the first episode of the Night Court reboot. Which oh, did you? Yeah. I was a fan. But because of the Night Court reboot, you know, there's interviews... So John Larroquette did an interview and he said, because he does the narration at the beginning of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original. No, I never knew that. And because he said that he had just met Toby and they were friends and he said that he got paid in a bag of weed for doing it. What a world. (laughs) (laughs) I love the connections like that. I need to watch part two again, post haste, because it again is Toby Hooper. Yeah. And I think it is not, it was eviscerated when it came out but i think now people look back on it a little more favorably and it's, it's more dennis of a comedy it, right yeah and yeah i believe dennis hopper and yeah i don't remember it at all but i need to see it, it. but it wasn't made to like the 80s i don't think like mid 80s it's i don't remember i want to feel like it was 80 85 86 something like that. i'm gonna say 79 so he made he made that one and then i feel like they did their own like somebody else made kind of an unofficial. Oh, 1986. Wow. 
there you go. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of parts. But then they kind of rebooted it as something, and then they made like a part two to that, and now the one that we're talking about that just came out is like a brand new reboot sequel to the original, right? The Halloween-ish yeah. type thing. Okay. Oh! I could be wrong. So after part three, there, they but... went straight to the reboot uh, with the famous McConaughey with Zellweger. But there's been so many more. And it's always variations on the title, which I th- which I find funny. They dropped the the... Or they put the word chain and saw together. Because <laughs> I think the original is called the Texas Chain Saw Massacre. I don't even think chainsaw is one word. It looks like it's two words. Part three, and then the next generation, and then a hard reboot in 2003, and then the Texas Chainsaw The Beginning, which is a prequel in 2006, and then Texas Chainsaw 3D. Oh, yeah, the 3D one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is 2013. The 3D craze. I remember that. A lot of chainsaws flying at you, maybe. That looks like it's about it. Anyway. Uh, I enjoy, did you see Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers? I saw part of it, and it was pretty awesome. Yeah, I thought it was pretty funny. I liked that. I loved their choices with that. Uh, Jackass Forever was enjoyable. I only oh. saw maybe half of it, but that was, that was that's great. always good for a laugh. Yeah, movies that people didn't like that you liked. Because there's so many movies that I enjoyed that other people didn't. I really liked Bullet Train. Okay, I didn't see it. I loved The Gray Man. I just didn't see, you know, I watched a lot of movies, but they were like old movies. Some I've seen before or that I hadn't seen. I hear Lightyear was a big letdown, which is sad. Oh, see, that was that was the thing. I liked it, but not anybody else did. That, just that ending where he's the bad guy, like, you could have done something else. Okay. Yeah, see, that wasn't great. But I do love, I love time travel stuff. Like, I even liked Interstellar, and a lot of people didn't like that. What are you talking but about? But I loved, what? Interstellar like is, it? like, universally beloved. No, I don't think it was. Tenet I think it was... is not universally beloved yeah, yet. Yeah, Tenet's not. I didn't see that either. You haven't um, seen Tenet Interstel- yet? Well, because people keep talking about how shitty it is. That's why it's like, I see it, and I'm just like, ah, I'll pass it up. Oh, no, I think you'll love it. You know, I really like Robert Pattinson more and more, the more I see of him. I saw The Lighthouse with him in... Uh, yeah, and I've been scared Bell. to see that. that. It seems too... It's, it's, it goes nowhere. Like, it, it, there's, it has some sort of ending, but it's not really an ending. But it's a it's a fine performance between the two of them. So that's why it's enjoyable to watch, and it looks cool. Uh, but I like Pattinson a lot nowadays. And then The Batman really sold me on him as well. Yeah, uh, it was just so good. So I do want to see Tenet because of that. And I like... Um, Denzel Washington's son. He's good, too. Yeah, that was my first experience with him, and I liked it. You know what Marvel movies need? More Rick Jones. Has there ever been a Rick Jones in the Marvel movies? You know who I'm talking about? Yeah, I know he exactly who you're talking about. Cap sidekick for a while. He's the guy that caused Bruce Banner to become the Hulk. Yeah. He would trade bodies with Captain Marvel. Yeah. He would go to the microverse while Captain Marvel was in or on Earth, and then vice versa. I remember that now. I know he's an old-fashioned sidekick type that is really out of date but the comic creators have used him consistently in all these decades and found new ways for him to be an actual character you know beyond just being a sidekick and I, that's what i always liked about rick jones is that he started as this teenage this overhyped teenager <laughs> in the avengers you know helping the avengers out and now he's an actual character anyway i'm surprised we haven't seen rick jones i think at some point we might horror in 2022 did you ever see the first terrifier never heard of it the clown that's like grotesque terrifier terrifier it's out of its way to be as grotesque and vicious as humanly possible and you will okay. feel dirty when you've done watching it probably not gonna watch then there was pearl and x i haven't seen those yet there's bodies 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 which looks adorable fucking scream sucked and then there was smile that would have been scream five right yeah there was the new hellraiser Oh, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. But I heard some good things with that. It was good. Like, 2022 was the year of good horror. I love the first Hellraiser movie. It may be one of my... It's probably my top three favorite horror movies. It's so dark. And, like, this movie... It hurts. ...just has a little bit of it compared to back then. But what I loved about the 80s movie is that it was very sexual and disturbing. See, I can't remember it. I need to watch it again. It was so simple. It was a, a woman and her husband... Uh, are moving into his old uh, his parents old house and his brother used to live there and his brother was a real piece of shit like got into drugs gambling they don't even know if he's alive or dead but he clearly was living there for a while unbeknownst to the guy his wife had an affair with his brother and when she goes up into the attic somebody gets hurt moving and blood 
hits the ground, it reassembles the brother who was all in on this box and opened it up because he wanted to experience ultimate pleasure from pain and it tore him to pieces. So then she helps, she brings men up to the attic and kills them so he can use their blood to reform himself so they can be together again. It's very disturbing and it's disgusting, but I just loved, as a kid I watched it and it was just like sexual overtones it hurt watching that movie that I'll never forget it. And I just watched it recently and I love that movie. I'm just like, it's so good. And I mean, part two continues their story, doesn't it? It continues her story. Oh, just her. And she, and it's similar, but they move it into kind of a city setting and she's just like, she has no skin. So she is kind of like a succubus now and she's trying to find somebody else to help her reform herself so they can be together something like that. But uh, it was diminishing returns as the movies went on so the second's not as good as the as the first oh yeah and like the third one is still watchable but after that i don't yeah, think after I've seen that any i of think them. it gets pretty but i would like to watch those movies one day for our podcast but there's like 10 of them or more i think that's a great idea troll uh a real quick tangent netflix movies highlighting movies that you would have never seen troll was a 2022 norwegian monster movie about trolls appearing again in modern world. Now, didn't Rennie Harlan direct that, or am I wrong about that? I think you're wrong, because the name is Roar Utog, screenplay by Espen Orkin, produced by <laughs> Esper Horn and Christian Strand Sinkrud. I'm Marie Willeman. Kim- I'm, I apologize for saying all these names wrong. So offensive. Watched the movie, and it's just so funny. The troll in the movie never does anything wrong. Except for once when he ate one Christian, because trolls eat Christians. They can smell them. They love them. Tasty. Okay, the guy that directed Troll directed the 2018 Tomb Raider. And that movie was... Oh, really? Okay. That movie was good. It was super boring. You're stupid. They tried, but it was boring. It was great. Anyway, Troll, this guy wakes up in a mountain, and then humans just immediately start attacking him, and that's the movie. He at no point is a threat, at no point is he a dick... It's just, it was a crazy ass movie. I was reading an article about Cloverfield, remember? Cloverfield, the original. Yeah. And how it was Matt Reeves, you know, because like it was her first directed film. I believe it was his first directed film. But but the J.J. Abrams was the name, so you never really heard about the director so yeah. much. It was all, it was always Abrams. But he was just talking about how, like, and I never really, I didn't really care watching the movie, but he was just like, the, the movie was basically, the monster was basically like a child. Yep. And that's why it was just fucking everything up because it was just scared and, you know, and I was like, yeah, that made sense to me. It's kind of that, it's kind of similar in that way that the humans just won't leave the thing alone. You know, I mean, that monster in Cloverfield was super big and causing a lot of destruction, <laughs> even if he didn't mean it. <laughs> I have still only seen Cloverfield the once in theaters and it made me so motion sick that I've never tried again. I remember. I remember we watched it. You got pretty sick. Cloverfield was his third movie. Oh, okay. First movie, Future Shock from 94. Wow. Second movie, The Paul Bearer. The Paul Bearer. Do you remember The Paul Bearer? 1996 romantic comedy starring Gwyneth Paltrow and David Schwimmer. (laughs) Wow. That was his second movie, huh? And then Cloverfield. So from the Paul Bear, J.J. Abrams saw the Paul Bear and was just like, that's the guy that should direct my monster movie. <laughs> that's the guy. <laughs> uh, well, good for him. His next movie was a romantic horror film called Let Me In. And then he does all the cool stuff. Dawn, War, Batman. Yeah, Let Me In. Wasn't that the vampire movie? I don't know. It was like the remake of the Swedish vampire movie or something. English language versions of the Let Right One In. Yeah. How do you know that? Because I saw it. It's... I actually watched that one. I didn't realize Matt Reeves directed it. Funny. I'm happy for his success. I am too. I, I like him. Cool guy. He makes yeah. a good movie. Did you watch the Knives Out sequel? Oh, yeah. Did you? Did you like it? I did not. It's good. It's... I think the first one's better. The first one I was never a big a fan of because I just felt like it was a bunch of rich assholes for two hours acting like assholes, and it just didn't really grab me. And I didn't really care for the Daniel Craig character very much. Yeah, I'm a fan. So then now I see the sequel, the cast in the sequel, and I'm just like, yeah, kind of seems like a bunch of rich assholes sitting around <laughs> acting like assholes. And I'm not really into his foghorn leghorn thing. Like, it just seems, you know, I don't um, know, a little overblown. This one's more on the nose. Like, the main rich guy is clearly Elon Musk, and all of them are his circle of friends. I do like Edward Norton, 
Edward Norton's always good. Yeah, it's good, but it's just not quite as good. Because the mystery isn't as exciting. I don't know the right way to say it. I, I don't think Ryan Johnson's capable of making a bad movie. So, like, if you split his movies between A movies and B movies, this is a B movie. Hey, they can't all be winners. Yeah. Did you see the newest uh, James Bond movie? No, nah, that's never been a franchise I participated in. Is there anything in 2023 that we're excited about? Do you know anything coming up? I'm more excited about, like, music and stuff that comes out. Like, when I know somebody is making a new album or something. There's not a lot in here that's blowing my mind. The Flash. What are your... Th- I don't even know. Just, can they just get that over with? Why don't they just put it out on HBO Max right now? Like, who cares? <laughs> it's so disconnected from the rest of them because of how much time has come and how much press is about it and how the Snyderverse is done anyways. And I just like, what are they doing? The entire... Put it out. The Snyderverse is done and the DCEU or whatever the fuck it's called is done. Apparently, Like, I mean, they're gonna... I love that they hired James Gunn. That'll be fun. But did they already put out the Iron Man, the Aquaman sequel? Or no, has that not even come out yet. It hasn't come so out. They're yet. still doing that too. Yeah. What the fuck? So they've got the Just Flash. Throw them out there. I don't care if they're not done. <laughs> they've got Shazam: Nobody Fury cares. of the Gods, and they've got yeah, but that's Aquaman. ready to come out though. Yeah, but Flash has been going yeah. on for so fucking long. I watched recently the a movie completely like anything else I watched was Patterson with Adam Driver. Jim Jarmusch film came out maybe like 2016. Uh, it was just about him. He's a bus driver in Patterson, New Jersey. His name is Patterson. He lives with his girlfriend. It's a very quiet, a very slow movie where he drives a bus, but he's also a poet and he just likes to write poetry. And that's really all the movie's about. It's definitely a Jim Jarmusch film. And I really liked it. It was just one of those slow movies that, uh, that he kind of makes. And I just appreciated it because there wasn't a lot of anything to it. It was just a fun little movie. Jarmusch is crazy, man. Yeah. In a good way. But I want to make movies like him. Like, I, I like his career. He's clearly been successful at it. And he doesn't really need to do anything except what he wants, you know? I think that's cool. Thinking of people who just do whatever they want, the Barbie movie is really curious to me. I wanted to talk to you about that, seeing that trailer. What is your What was your initial reaction when you saw that? Oh, the trailer was adorable. Just, this is a movie that I would normally never see. Yeah. But knowing that it is written... By Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach. Yeah, I think she directed it, too. Yeah, and she's directing it. This could be a secret great work? It like could be, but I saw that trailer, and it looked, to me, like the biggest mistake of their lives, and it's going to be an enormous garbage fire of a film. That, that's my, <laughs> that was my impression. That was my only impression from it, where I was just like, oh my god, this is going to end their careers. Like, that's how bad this movie is going to bomb. I feel like people are going to be like, oh my god, what is this pile of trash? I just don't see it as being But I could possible. be wrong. But that's what I love. I have too that's much faith I, that's what I felt. in the two of them. What have you seen by them, though? I mean, I know they're popular, but I haven't really seen much by them. I mean, this is only Gerwig's third movie. Like, she did Lady Bird. Yeah, did you see Little Women, or did, did you see Lady Bird? Oh, God. I didn't see it. Heard good things. I never saw Little Women. I think I saw them both. And they were good. Yeah, I didn't. And his stuff, I know he's been around for quite a while, but I haven't really seen it. I've just heard about him. I just know that he's good, but I haven't. I can't say I've seen anything. I may have saw that Ben Stiller movie he did, Green Greenberg or something like that. But I think that might have been the only movie I saw. And he, uh, Jeff Daniels, I know, was in one of his movies that was kind of a The Squid and the Whale. Yeah, but I never saw it. So I, don't I know. mean, so he. Has... I just know these people by names, you know. You know, like he was one of the writers on Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, Squid and the Whale, the Fantastic Mr. Fox. Like It's possible, and I'm not, I don't want them to fail. I just think that the Barbie movie in itself is a commentary on what uh, Hollywood thinks people want, and it's so far from reality. But people don't always know what they want either, that it's just going to be a, an enormous garbage fire. That's all I can say. Did you see White Noise? No, I didn't. It looked insufferable. But again, it might be good. The dancing, though, I can't get past the dancing and the singing in, in real life situations. It's just bizarre to me. Unless I know I'm watching Blues Brothers or some shit. I, I just don't get it. White Noise is one of those movies that's not it's not going to be a great movie just because of what he tried to do it's an unadaptable book and when a director no matter how good you are takes a book that's unadaptable and then makes a movie it's most of the time it's going to turn out like white noise where it's okay like it's just so tricky sometimes things can be too weird 
Yes. And maybe maybe Too Weird works in kind of a low budget, not popular filmmaker kind of way. But if you put Too Weird with someone who's like kind of an A-lister almost and, and always in the news about movies when they make new movies, it, it fails often. I think it was just because I was reading a bunch of Tarantino's quotes from uh, podcast appearances. But one of his quotes was talking about David Lynch. And he was like, you know, it's okay to make an art film for yourself, but when that's all you ever make, you end up crawling up your own ass. And after I saw <laughs> Twin Peaks, what was the movie? Firewalk with Yes. Me. He said yeah. David Lynch had crawled up so far up his own ass that he couldn't fan- figure it out, and I'll never watch one of his movies again. But the thing about Firewalk with Me is that it's totally a piece with the show it was ne- it never should have been a theatrically released movie like it is totally the show <laughs> and then the return connects to that so now once you have the return you understand the movie better and everything is like yeah that's a universe unto itself that's not anything they should have put in theaters so that wasn't his fault i don't think he just had popularity so they put it out there but yeah it was a total bomb of course it was i don't know man i like lynch I like all of his movies. All right, yeah. Wrap up. Thanks, everybody, for yeah. listening to us for 50 goddamn episodes. And I'm sure there's some of you out there that have at least watched three, or at least listened to, like, three, maybe five. <laughs> <laughs> Even if this is your first chance listening, just know that we've done better and we've done worse. And it's up to you to figure out what the gems are for you. And if you are somebody that, for whatever reason, has has listened to all 50, you've definitely seen us improve. I mean, that means that they've been locked in that room for a number of years now. So, like, the level of offense (laughs) is pretty high. (laughs) Right. We've That means we've talked about at least 100 movies. But a lot of those episodes, we've talked about more than one. It's true. So maybe we've talked about over 100 and maybe we've talked like 125 movies or something like that. You know? We're going to start so one of those. A couple years here. What's that thing where you can pay people to learn about stuff and they get all these famous people to do? Like a master class? Yeah. We, we're going to do a master class on film theory and it's just going to be the podcast. How to succeed in podcasts without making any money by Aaron and Justin. And it's, you know, it's not even done yet. You know, we're only uh, 10% in on the master class. Yeah. We we hope you enjoy the ride together. Bye.